Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to be looking at how we can use classes in SwiftUI to help us build our view models. So when looking at what a view model is, it's an object that we use in our apps to help us handle business logic. Business logic is any code that you write that affects the UI. So the example we're going to be using to help us understand this concept is a counter since the business logic here is that we want to write some code that increases a counter and reflect this in our UI. So Let's first of all build out the UI for our counter. Okay, cool. So we just have a V stack here with some text and a button using the new iOS 15 styles available to us. So now we actually need to build our view model. And now you may be thinking that you can use a struct and do something like this. So let's say if we just had a struct here called counter and then make it observe, make it an observable object. You may think that this is valid. But instantly when you run it, you run into problems. And the problem that you have here is that a struct is a value type, meaning that when it's changed, we actually get a new copy of that struct. So we can't actually do something like this. Instead, if we want to use the observable object protocol, we have to use a class instead. So how could we actually use a struct though to actually observe changes to our model? Well, in order to do that, we don't actually need this anymore. So we can just remove that and instead we can actually just directly use the state property to observe changes on our struct. But before we do that, let's actually just write out some code to actually add in the logic for having a counter. So the first thing we want to do is create a variable called val. And then we'll make this an integer. And this is what's going to hold the number of times that it's been tapped on the screen. Now, after doing this, we actually want to create a new function here called increase as well to help us increase the counter. And then we want to actually increase the counter by one. Okay, cool. So now when you build this, you'll get an error. And the reason why you're actually getting an error here is because like I said before, with structs, they're not really like reference types, like a class. So you can't actually update a reference of it. So if you want to update a property within a struct, what you have to do is actually use the mutating keyword to let the struct know that you want it to change itself. So all we need to do, if you just click on here and then click fix, you'll see that it actually adds the mutating keyword before the function name increase. Now let's actually use this in our content view and have it observe the changes to our counter. So we want to create a state object in here. And this now is our content view source of truth. So this is where it's actually going to read updates from. So let's actually use our increase function in our button. And then finally, we need to tie our counter value to the text placeholder that we have here. So one thing to note is that you have to use string interpolation here because val is an integer, so you can't just directly pass it into text. So let's actually test this out. So you should see on your SwiftUI preview that it's actually set to zero, which is the initial value in our counter. So if we actually run this, and if we just tap on the button, you'll see that this works because what's going on here is that we're actually telling increase to actually change the value to add one and then our state property is causing our Swift UI view to re-render and show the new value that this was increased to. And if you want to learn more about the state property wrapper, then you should check out my video, State in Swift UI. Now this is a valid solution and we actually could use this if you just want the simple view model um, struct within our view. What about if we actually wanted to pass this counter around to different views within our app? Like let's say we had a different screen here where we wanted to read the value from this counter. We've got a problem now. And the problem is, is that there's actually no way to expose this to a completely different view. So how can we actually solve this? Well, if we wanted to, we actually could use a class this time and use the observable object protocol to help us achieve this. What we want to do is create a view model with a class. And by us creating a view model with a class, not only are we able to use the observable object protocol, but it also allows us to create something that is called a reference type. Now, the difference between this and a value type is that when you make a change to a reference type, it doesn't actually make a copy. Instead, it just updates the object in memory Hence why it's called a reference type because you're updating a reference to it. So now let's see how we can get this exact same functionality in our current app example. So I'm going to create a new class at the top here. So now we have our view model. So this is just the base skeleton of our view model. So we've marked it with final. So no other class can try to subclass it. 
and we're able to now use the observable object protocol. So when you're working with the observable object protocol, if you want to observe changes to a property, you need to use the app publish property wrapper before that variable. So in our case, we want to observe changes to our val. So let's actually add this in now. So now we've added app publish here, meaning that we're now able to observe changes to this value. Now this may be new to you here as well, but this is just a habit that I do. So if I don't need to write to this property from a view, I always mark my variables with private set. Now there's some views where it needs to have access to it so it can read and write to it. But in this case, we're only reading to it within a text. So there's no need for us to expose it so someone can change it, which is why I'm closing it off with the private set here. So this just essentially means that within this file, you can change it and read it. Any object from outside of this scope can only read this value. So now we need to add our increase function like we have in Astrot. So let's just do that now. So you'll notice it's similar, but the only difference that we have here is that we're not using the mutating keyword and we don't need to use the mutating keyword with classes because like I said before, we're able to update a reference to itself. So we don't need that keyword. So let's comment this out in here. And we're going to create an instance of our view model in this file. So in order to do that, you want to use the state object property wrapper. So now we've got an instance of our observable object source of truth now that our views can actually read from here. So we need to replace any instances of counter with VM, which is just a shorthand for view model. So before we carry on, let's just test this out. And now if we hit increase, you'll see that we've now got the exact same functionality as before, except now this time we've got a class that we're able to pass around different views so let's actually see that passing around different views in action. In order to actually inject this into multiple views, we now need to use the environment object property wrapper. So let's create a new view in a tab view at the root of our app. And if you wanna learn more about tab views as well, check out my video tab view in Swift UI. So let's go into the root of our application where it says it's test project for me, but it's just the file where you see the app main entry point. And in here, what we want to do is actually add in a tab bar so we can add in two different views. So I'm just going to type out and then we'll break this down. Cool. So now we have a tab view and we have our first view in our tab view, which is our content view. And we're just going to give it the label with the home icon and some home text. So we need to create another view for telling you how many times the counter has actually been tapped. So we just hit command N. And then we just create a new Swift UI view called counter detail view. So in this counter detail view, we're just gonna do a bit of typing and then break it down. So in this view, we've just got some text in a V stack where we show the number of taps that someone has done. So let's add this into our tab view as well. So now we have two different views within our tab view and then we'll run it on a simulator to see what it looks like. So now we have our counter detail view and I'm just giving it the label and icon of a settings cog. So we created our source of truth within our content view. But remember what I said before, we actually wanna pass that source of truth between two different views. So instead, what we actually need to do is actually create an instance of it within our main app entry point here. So let's do that now. So by us doing this here at the root of our application, we're now able to actually pass this into either one of these views and they're able to read and write to this source of truth. So now we need to use the modifiers to actually inject this into these two views. And in order to do this, you want to use the environment object modifier. You can actually learn more about this in my video, environment object in Swift UI. So on our tab view, we're just going to apply it onto here. Like so. Now you may be wondering, why did I apply it onto the tab view and not onto each view specifically? Well, the way the environment object works modifier is that it will actually apply this onto any of the child views within the parent so essentially these two will actually now get access to the environment object within our tab view cool so now we need to actually use the environment object property wrapper within both of these views and then what we want to do is rather than us having our state object we want to change this to be environment object and then we just want to set the type of this to be counter view model like so Okay, cool. So now this will allow us 
to access the environment object that's been injected via our tab view. So when you're working with the environment object, you want to make a habit of making sure that when you add this, you automatically add in an instance of this view model to your SwiftUI preview. So let's do that now. Sweet. So now that we've done that, we need to apply the exact same thing onto our counter detail view. So if we go into your counter detail view, we'll first of all add in the environment object property wrapper. And then what we'll do is we'll also make sure that we add it into our SwiftUI preview as well. So now our counter detail view is able to read from the source of truth, which is at the main app entry point. And the final thing we need to do within this file to get this working is we just need to read the value within this text. So let's do that now. Okay, awesome. So in order to see this in action, we need to run this on the simulator because you can't actually test out the main app entry point here in a canvas. So let's run this now. So you can see here, we now have our tab view on the bottom and we have our two different views. And if I actually tap on increase, it's working fine. But this time, if I go to the setting screen, you'll now see that it tells me the number of taps that someone did from our home screen because our source of truth is being shared between our two views. So just to summarize, in this situation, when would you want to use a class versus a struct in SwiftUI? So you want to use structs when working with models like I break down in my video, easy ways to create custom data models in SwiftUI. The only time I use structs other than for a model is when I need an object that has property that I don't need to observe, i.e. a class that fetches and returns data from a service, or if I have a specific use case where I'm able to just observe the state of some kind of logic for that view. So like I said before at the start of the video, if the counter only needed to be counted within the content view, there'd be no need for me to do this. But because I need to share this between two different views, it makes sense for me to extract it out into a view model. And you wanna use classes where you need to observe changes to something via your business logic. So let's say for example, if you want to observe changes to some kind of view model, where you have a lot of logic in, it makes sense to actually break this out into a view model rather than making your SwiftUI views get bigger and bigger and become massive. So it actually helps you separate out your logic and you can observe them using the observable protocol and publish properties and classes help you because they have reference types. So that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you left some feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.